everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and I'm going to show you how I created this card using the new Mushroom House and a few other elements. I'm going to start off by stamping out the images that I want to use for my card today. So I'm using the new Oh Gnome stamp set which is really super cute. So I'm taking a piece of white cardstock from Lawn Fawn and I'm laying out the images that I think I'm going to use on my card. I actually end up having too many, but I'm going to save those off on the side for another project. So I have a couple gnomes at the bottom, some of the mushrooms, and then some of the flowers. And then I'm going to use some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is Copic friendly since I will be using my Copic markers. Now there are so many images and elements on the stamp set for scene building, which is really great and I think makes the stamp value even better. Once my images are all stamped out, I'm going to start coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with the skin tones for my little girl and my little boy gnome. I did start off with a couple other colors, but what I ended up using is E04, E11, and E00. Since these are really small areas to color, uh, I did drop down to these. The E04 is a really drastic dark shadow color, but I really like that. So that is what I use for the shadow areas under the hats. And then I blend out and you can see there's not a lot of room, but it does leave a little bit of that contrasting color. For my little girl outfit, I'm using R24, R22, and R21. And if you've watched me color before, I do like to color my images twice, which can sometimes not be a great thing because I am a heavy coloring person. And what happened uh, which I end up pointing out is that my red bled into the hair a little bit. So I'm glad I hadn't colored the hair yet because I'm going to be able to come in and color the hair brown, which is going to cover up my little bit of bleeding. That's just operator error because I use so much ink when I'm coloring. Uh, if you do it, if you color it with just one time, you should be perfectly fine. And I did actually get the inspiration for my little girl and boy gnome from the gnomes movie. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Gnomeo and Juliet. That's what I actually kind of based my coloring off of was their outfits. I thought they were really super cute. But you can definitely color them however you want. I'm coloring in the pleats of the apron. I used C3, C2, and C0. And I just did that C3 uh, very carefully because I didn't want it to look dirty, but I wanted there to be a significant pleat looking there. And I'm just going to continue on with my boy gnome. I do use a lot of the same colors throughout the images just so I'm not having a pile of markers on my desk. But you can see I am listing all of the colors that I use up at the top of the screen. For his hat and his shirt, I'm going to be using B18, B16, and B14. I'm keeping the darkest area to the left-hand side of the outfit. And then just blending that out. And same thing, the hat and the outfit both, I kind of kept that darker, darkest color to the left-hand side and a little bit under the arms. For the beard, I did W4. W1 and W0 and I just did little lines up uh, in the image you can see there's kind of indentations where the beard is so I just went up from those lines and then finishing off the belt and the buckle now for the mushrooms I didn't end up using these uh, it was almost just too much for my scene but I did want to leave in the coloring in case you did want to see how I colored those up I do go around the spots. If you happen to color in the spots on accident, you could just use a white gel pen to cover those in. Or if you have white Nouveau drops, that would be really cool to add to your mushroom too, or even white glitter drops, you know, something like that in case you do want to just color it in and not have to go all the way around. I'm using W4, W2, and W0 for the stems and R24, R22, and R21 for the mushroom tops. And I did just color it twice because I didn't want to bleed. That's like I said, totally operator, operator error. 
So if you just leave it with the one layer, you should be perfectly fine. To me, reds are known to bleed, so I have to remember to be a little bit more careful. And then just really quick coloring on the flowers. I did Y23 and Y17, and then YG17 and YG23 for the stems. Once I have everything colored, I am going to take the coordinating die and line those up over the images and I'll hold them down with some post-it tape and run it through my die cut machine, but you could definitely fussy cut these as well if that's what you prefer. I really do like how the dies cut out the image and I like the clean edge that the coordinating dies give. Now I did do some die cutting off screen since there is quite a bit of die cutting to this. This is the mushroom house which is so adorable. I love all the different ways that you can customize this mushroom house. I used chili pepper cardstock for the top and I did fog cardstock for the base of the mushroom house. For the door and the window I used some of the wood grain paper bag cardstock and then for the light behind it I'm using some sunflower. And I did decide I wasn't going to have my door open. So I am cutting a piece of sunflower cardstock to fit behind my door. And then I'll just trim it to fit. And then it just looks like my house is lit up. And I am coming in and I'm going to put some foam squares behind my door to pop that up a little bit. And I really liked how that was popped up. I kind of wish I would have did that for my window at the top, but I had already glued that piece down already. So some more elements to my card is the little picket fence and I die cut that from wood grain cardstock as well and that was in the white. I have a stitched hillside border that I die cut from cilantro cardstock and I also brought in this rainbow die. So for this one it cuts out, you have to run this through a few times with each color and what I did to kind of help hold that in place is I put some post-it post -it tape behind it to hold those in. And then I could attach that to my card. To start creating my scene, I am using some of the Spiffy Speckles paper. And this is the blue pattern paper out of that pack. And I'm just starting to kind of line up how I want my scene to go and where everything is going to fit. I did go ahead and attach my rainbow right away. And I'm going to have that hanging off of the card. And I can always trim that off and use that extra piece of the rainbow on a future project. And then I'll go ahead and attach my fence. And then I can come in and attach my stitched hillside right over my fence. So I just have the fence part peeking up. Now I'm not sure about everybody else, but I always have a really hard time getting a sentiment on my card. I seem to either, either never leave enough room or I'm just not sure what color I want to use to put on my cardstock. And after much deliberating off camera, I decided I was just going to stamp my sentiment directly onto my card front. A lot of times you want to do this before you start attaching everything, but I did luck out. I left my mushroom house off. So I just have kind of my scene here, which worked out really well. Now to stamp my sentiment, this does come in a couple pieces. I'm using there's gnome place like home, which with the rainbow totally reminds me of the Wizard of Oz, which I thought was super cute. So I'm actually using some of my misty corners to get this lined up straight. Since this does come in a couple pieces, I just had it all laid out right at the top. I brought in that mushroom house, make sure that I still left enough room. And then once that was straight, I'm just going to go ahead and ink that up and stamp that directly onto the card. And I am really happy that I did it and not added a banner or anything. I just like it stamped right on the front there with that black ink. Then I did go ahead and attach some foam tape behind the entire piece to pop that up a little bit. And I'm putting that on top of some white cardstock for my card base. And then I can just start building up my scene. So I'm adding my mushroom house you can see I am popping up that top a little bit because I do have some layers going on in the background. So I put regular adhesive towards the bottom of the mushroom house and then I used some foam squares so that way it'll all be even. 
Now I did keep the flowers, so I have my little tulip and my daisy here that I'm just attaching directly to my mushroom house. And then I will add a little bit of foam tape behind my grass to kind of pop that up a little bit. So this is just a lot of scene building, a lot of really cute elements. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of Wizard of Oz. And I, I honestly didn't think of that until after my card was completely done and with the sentiment. So I love how that just kind of worked out on its own. And then I'll just come in and finish attaching my cute little gnomes here. So this would be a great... A housewarming card or just a hello in general card. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and taking a look at some of these products. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Mm -hmm.